In this video, we're going to talk about Proposition 22. I'm going to share with you what I think are the key factors involved in making a decision. And then at the end of the video, stick around, I'll share with you, am I voting for or against Proposition 22? Hey everybody, it is Jay Crater with the Ride Share Guy, drinking my vanilla sweet cream gold brew. Mm. Coming to you from South, a hotel room in South Lake Tahoe. Some exciting news to share. Um, I recently purchased that. That is called an Aura ring. And I no longer have to wear the Fitbit. Okay, this little ring does everything that the whole big wrist thing did. And it still measures your sleep. So I've been doing Fitbit since December. And in that whole time, I've gotten a sleep rating. They, they, they uh, measure your sleep and give you a score and I've only th three times have I been over 90 90 and it's been a while it's really hard to get you, you gotta uh, like uh, like get really calm before you go to sleep you gotta sleep plenty of hours and even then you're not sure if you're gonna get above a 90 because if you have a lot of dreams you're not getting into that deep state um, but last night I'll show you what the aura ring said 90 how about that? I love that. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm feeling full of energy <laughs> for my, uh, my couple of days up here at Lake Tahoe. It's a beautiful day. All right, let's look at this graphic. This is the background of Proposition 22. So back in January 1st, Assembly Bill 5 was put into place that basically told Uber and Lyft that they have to make their uh, drivers employees rather than independent contractors, but that was ignored. Then in May, the California Attorney General and a coalition of city attorneys sued Uber and Lyft for wrongfully classifying their drivers. Then in June, uh, the CPUC, California Public Utilities Commission, announced that Uber and Lyft must provide workers' compensation coverage to drivers by July 1st. August 5th, um, they got sued, okay? August 10th, the judge said, Uber and Lyft, you must classify their drivers as employees within 10 days or file an appeal. They did file an appeal. They were granted an a pre, a, a reprieve um, on August 20th. Mid-October, an appeal court will hear oral arguments. So that's in about a month. And then November 3rd is the, uh, the fate of Proposition 22, all right? So that's a really beautiful graphic, which was put together by the Rideshare guy, right? And uh, you can read the whole article if you want um, at our at our website. Number one, Uber and Lyft do not want this this uh, this situation. They want you to vote yes on Prop 22 so that they don't have to make uh, their uh, drivers employees. As you can see here, with funding from Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash campaign behind California Prop 22 tops 180 million dollars so they're spending 180 million dollars to convince to get into the heads of the Amer of the california voters to say yes prop 22 we we want the drivers to be independent contractors we want the drivers to have their freedom and flexibility and we don't want our rates our, our passenger rates to go up so number two what are the two options okay so this graphic uh and i've made a bunch of uh highlights here so these are the things that are important to me. The earnings guarantee. So AB5 would guarantee $13 an hour. Okay, that's the state required minimum wage. Okay, uh, Prop 22 uh, would uh, proposes a net earnings floor equal to 120% of the state or municipality's minimum wage, okay, which would be $15.60. However, that only covers when you have a passenger in your car. Okay, so here's my take on that is, if you're driving in California and you're not making like $20 an hour, something's wrong. I, I've always made at least 28 to 35, almost $40 an hour. So to me, this whole minimum wage thing, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just saying this is my take on this situation. Okay, next we've got some cost reimbursement. So under Prop 22, uh, the, the drivers would get 30 cents per mile, okay, um, 
for miles that you have your passengers in the car. So I see that as a pay increase, right? Okay. Um, under AB5, um, the companies would have to cover all necessary expenditures. All right. Then we have hours worked. So this is an important one to me, right? If 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 uh, if Prop 22 does not pass, then you're going to have to be an employee. You're not going to be able to be an employee for both companies. So that's a that's a level of flexibility that I really uh, value because it allowed me to get rides faster where I could have both apps running at the same time. I also work more than 40 hours. 40 hours is not that much time. I used to work 60, sometimes 70 hours, right, to make 2,000 to 2,500 a week. As you can see, you'd be limited to 40 hours uh, as an employee and uh, with uh, with Prop 22, it's 12 hours for each of the companies. So you basically can drive as much as you want. Okay, then under healthcare, um, as an employee, you could be getting about a, a $167 per employee per month towards your healthcare. Under uh, Prop 22, it says you can get around $314. Okay, so that sounds better for Prop 22. Paid sick leave. Okay, here again for me, not an issue. I, I just, I don't get sick that often. Uh, if, if you're if you're gonna get a, a lot of sick, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've never used sick leave. Um, so again, this is not an issue for me. Uh, not included if, if you're an independent contractor and there is some sort of sick leave uh, if you're an employee, okay? And then there's Goodbye freedom and flexibility, all right? So, you see here, you got your picture of a time card. You know, used to, I used to work for a Safeway and I'd punch, put a card in this machine like that and it would click it and that means my day started. So this for me is the seminal issue, the freedom and the flexibility. So I like to work when I want to work and I like to take off when I don't, when I don't want to work. I don't think I'd be able to take two months off and go to Thailand. No, I don't think Uber or Lyft would uh, appreciate that if I was an employee uh, for them. Um, if I don't want to work a, a particular day and they're expecting me to work a particular day, I don't think I can say, hey, I'm going to go to the beach today. Sorry, Uber and Lyft. Number four, goodbye wage guarantee. That's all I've ever really wanted. I wanted to, to sign on with Uber and Lyft four and a half years ago, almost five years ago and know that what they were paying me was not going to change. I agree to those rates. You pay me those rates. Great. Then we've got a level playing field. Whether you vote for Proposition 22 and we, we remain independent contractors or you work for them as, as employees, they still have complete control over the rate. Okay. So we're never going to be complete independent contractors because an independent contractor, I could, draw, I could say, I'm, my, my ride is twice as valuable as most people's rides and I'm going to charge twice as much. But I can't do that, right? Um, in my coaching business, I can charge what I think I'm worth and then I've got to back it up with, with delivering a service that's worth the money that I'm asking for. That's a true independent contractor. So no matter which way you go, we're not going to have the option of creating our own wages and we have no control over whether Uber or Lyft changes the wages, whether we're an employee, whether we're uh, an independent contractor. Okay, number five, these are the factors that matter to me the most. Okay, if Prop 22 does not pass and Uber and Lyft are required to make people employees, um, they have said that probably 20% of drivers would work and 80% would not because 80% of the drivers are part-time drivers, right? They're going to be looking for people who are going to work 40 hours, right? Consistently, you know, do the job. The, the idea that 80% of the workforce that want to work maybe on the weekends or maybe work a few late nights, that they're just going to accommodate that, not going to happen. That's going to impact a tremendous amount of people, right? So the 20% who are going to get to drive, you know, great. You know, you're going to drive full time and you're going to do it by a schedule. Basically, we're tur it's turning it's turning rideshare into taxi companies. Um, 
You will work on Uber and Lyft schedule. You won't be you won't work more than 40 hours. Okay, um, you will be under Uber and Lyft's thumb in terms of when you work. Right, you know, they have that control as, as if you're an employee. And there's, as I said, no real rate guarantee. So my thought process: Uber and Lyft rates will go up uh, for passengers. Right, if they turn everyone into employees, 80% um, would not work. Okay, so if we go the employee model. 80% of the people who are driving for Uber and Lyft would not be driving. Um, that's a lot of people who depend on that, that revenue. Um, so in terms of looking at the, the whole, you know, the whole kind of California-wide impact, that's, that's a kind of a devastating hit. Um, the money is really not that much different, whether you're an employee um, <clears throat> or an independent contractor. The freedom and flexibility is number one for me, okay? The freedom and flexibility is number one issue for me. And for that reason, I say Prop 22 is the best of two bad options. I'm not getting what I want with either of them. And I've heard a lot of people say that, but you can't say that on November 3rd because something's going down. You gotta make a decision. You gotta pick, you gotta pick the, the best of two evils, right? And uh, based on what I've seen and based on what's important to me, and what I think is important to a lot of drivers, I say Prop 22 is uh, better than the employee model. So what are the key takeaways? Got to make a decision if you're in California. Um, this thing's going down one way or the other, and however it goes down, we're kind of stuck with it. So um, think it over. Think what, are, what, are the, what are the important factors that are running through your head, right? If you want to be an employee, have you thought it all the way through? What that's going to mean to your life, to your schedule? to uh, you having a boss all of a sudden, um, these are the things you gotta start, start thinking about. So I, I guess the key takeaway is I think Prop 22 does the least damage to the rideshare drivers in California. All right, so thank you for watching. Give it a thumbs up, let other people see this. Uh, subscribe to our channel and uh, stay, stay on top of everything that's happening in the rideshare industry, the gig industry and personal finance. This is Jay Crater saying uh, go out and have a great day, get lots of sleep, wear your mask, be safe out there.